8. September schrieb der Präsident der österreichischen Industriellenvereinigung, Georg Kapsch, im Standard folgendes. Es muss nicht gleich ein X-Event sein, ein Extremereignis, wie es der in Wien lebende US-amerikanische Systemtheoretiker John L. Casty beschreibt. Es reicht ein Virus, ein Cyberangriff und flöten gehen alle die wertvollen Daten. Nun, genau hier befinde ich mich heute, bei John Casty. Ich habe ihn angesichts der dramatischen Ereignisse, ja, ich möchte fast sagen, x Events in der politischen Szene der letzten Tage um ein Interview gebeten. Ich wollte mit ihm analysieren, ob es möglich ist, solche Ereignisse, wie sie bei der SPÖ im Moment im Wahlkampf auftreten, ja, wie sie Bundeskanzler Christian Kern passieren, ob sich der Kanzler auf diese vorbereiten hätte können, ob sich die Partei darauf vorbereiten hätte können und noch viel wichtiger, wie können wir uns auf mögliche Ereignisse ab dem 16. Oktober vorbereiten. Hier steht die Möglichkeit einer Koalition von Schwarz, nun Türkis und Blau im Raum und für viele ist das so etwas wie ein X-Event. Und die Frage ist, wie können wir uns darauf vorbereiten? Wie können wir Schlimmstes vermeiden? Ja, ist es überhaupt ein X-Event? Und diese Fragen möchte ich jetzt mit John Casty durchbesprechen. So John, with your simulations, with the X-Event dynamics, is this something one can prepare for? Yes, I think that you can. That's one of the reasons my company got started was to answer that very question in a positive way. The X events, of course, by their nature, are rare and surprising and often do a lot of damage. But it is possible to do two things. First of all, anticipate when there may be an X event. That doesn't mean predicting, but getting some sense of early warning signals and anticipation. So start paying attention. But at the same time, before the X event happens, if it's something that you definitely are worried about, some specific kind of X event, ask yourself, what kinds of strategies, what kinds of actions should I be taking now so that if that X event happens, I have some insurance, I have some protection, some buffering. And I think we can... Uh, you know, at X event dynamics help in both those directions. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific time frame one needs to consider in order to prepare for such an event? Well, this political events in general are ones, especially elections, national elections, there are things that unfold over a time scale that is measured in roughly a few years. Mm -hmm. Not days and not centuries either, but a few years. Mm -hmm. And so I think that usually uh, the campaigning usually starts uh, a year or two ahead of time in, in some sense. And that's about the right time to start thinking what are the kinds of rare and unsurprising events that might happen over that period of time that if they do happen will turn our lives upside down. Mm -hmm. And that we should start thinking about managing our political system, managing our party, if you like, and our campaign, so that we build in some protection in case one of those things does happen, so mm -hmm. that it doesn't just catch us totally by surprise and, and destroy our whole campaign. Mm -hmm. but, but I think you're right. It's a little late now, mm -hmm. a week before the election, yes. to start doing This is the time to start thinking, if you're a loser, about the next election mm -hmm. and what uh, the sentiment of the population is in terms of actions, not words. Mm -hmm. So this, this you can do now. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the, this election, I think to a large degree, unless there's some kind of major event, some explosions or some heart attacks or God knows what else, this election, uh, the cards, the dice have already been thrown. You just mm -hmm. have to wait and see how they turn up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The X event here was when the government broke up and when uh, the need for elections came true, because now we can think of uh, possible combinations for the government, so th it's not an accident anymore. But if we think of it, let's just think of 
uh, ex-black, now to qua blue government, mm -hmm. uh, as an accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's think of uh, uh, the situation we have more time. How would we, with your help, be able to prepare for that? Okay. Well, look, first of all, it depends on whether you're talking about an individual or you're talking about a corporation, or you're talking about uh, some big social group, mm -hmm. because the, the kinds of things that each of these, let's say, organisms would uh, take, it would be they have different things at their disposal. If you're an individual and you think you're going to have a big political shift in the government, let's say, to the right, um, in from everything that I understand, one can expect with a turquoise um, blue coalition, uh, it will be a lot less social services, mm -hmm. the kinds of things that Austrians have become accustomed to over the last 50 years. A lot of these, I don't think they will totally disappear, but they will be shrunken. Mm -hmm. they, they, the pensions may get smaller, the taxes may get higher, uh, the uh, social housing may get a diff more difficult to obtain and so on. And these are all things that affect individuals in a very basic way. And so then you say, well, uh, suppose my pension is going to shrink. What should I be doing today to put in place something to help fill that gap? Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly. It depends on your individual situation. Maybe you have to get a part-time job. Maybe you have to start saving more and spending less or whatever. These mm -hmm. are all pretty obvious things. Mm -hmm. At a corporate level, it's a different story mm -hmm. and so on. But there's always something that you can do if you have some sense that something like this could happen. Let's, build a, let's take out a little insurance mm -hmm. and start doing some things today to build in a buffer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to protect us. So it's not just a shock. Yeah, yeah. And how does it work? How would we be able to prepare for such an accident? Well, look, if you want to use science, the scientific method is very clear. You have some data, you create a hypothesis, something that you assert is explains the data, and then you have to go into a laboratory to do control repeatable experiments to test that hypothesis. Does it stand up to experiment or not? Now, what you have in the social domain, like we're talking about, mm -hmm. you don't have any laboratories. You can't do controlled, repeatable experiments. You have some mad theory of finance. You can't go down to Wall Street and ask them to change the rules today mm -hmm. so you can test your theory. And even if you could, you could never repeat the experiment. So the alternative is to create a virtual world, not the real world. Mm -hmm. Create an electronic copy, if you like, of the real world put it inside your computer, and that computer becomes a laboratory for doing experiments. Then you can test strategy, you can say what, you can, you can basically play what if. Mm -hmm. What if I change the pension scheme? Mm -hmm. And by how much? How, what kind of impact will that have on people? What if I uh, eliminate public housing? Or, and so on and so forth. You can do these experiments, run them through your virtual world and see how they come out, and if it's not to your liking, uh, then you can change your strategy and try something else. So yes, and, and we're able to do that. But in order to do it effectively, we have to have knowledge about what it is that kind of events, extreme events, let's say, that you are most worried about, the kind that can blow your world upside mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So that we, and then uh, you can drop them into this fake world and see what kind of effect they actually have. I mean, I did an experiment like this for the catastrophe insurance industry, mm -hmm. and what these guys were most interested in was how do I manage my company today in terms of what areas I, t I could give insurance coverage, if, how, if, I, if I have excess risk, how do I sell some of it off to the reinsurers and so on, mm -hmm. if a hurricane happens in the Gulf Coast of the U.S., or if an earthquake uh, wipes out half of Japan, or whatever. Well, in the virtual world, you can drop in hurricanes and earthquakes at some mm -hmm. random moment and see mm -hmm. what effect that has on, is your strategy enabling you to s succeed or maybe even benefit from those events, or do you get blown away by them? Mm -hmm. So th we know how to do that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. those are different kinds of, that's not the same kind of X event that you're talking about in the political domain. Mm -hmm. So, but you, 
can basically, uh, you can do the same thing, except mm -hmm. the world will be a different one. That's, you're exploring a different world. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we take the program of all the parties and we put them in a simulator like that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we, um, let's say, run all the programs, mm -hmm. we could see what comes out, right? You can. I mean, fundamentally, you know, thinking, basically what, what you have, you're, you have a big multi-person game. Mm -hmm. Each of the parties is one of the players in this game. Each of them has some, some programs or strategies that they want to use, and they ask, what's the right thing to do? Well, the answer is, there is no right thing to do. The right thing to do depends on what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. but you don't know what everybody else is doing. You know more of it in the political domain than in most mm -hmm. than in business world, for example. But uh, so the ultimate outcome, when you put all these players into interaction, each using their own strategy, something happens. And some will be winners, some will be losers. And the losers are going to say, gee, maybe I better change my strategy. And then you try out a different strategy, assuming everybody else still does what they did before. And basically you play this game many times, mm -hmm. and maybe you, you finally evolve into something that is workable, tolerable, let's say at least, mm -hmm. and that uh, enables you to roll with the punches if some big, extreme, unexpected event takes place, that it gives you the opportunity to, to survive, at least survive, mm -hmm. if not be a beneficiary. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It can be done. Mm -hmm. But it takes some time and, and some real... You can't get more knowledge out than what you put in. Mm -hmm. all, all that you get, all that your, program, your computer program does, takes knowledge that's implicit and makes it explicit. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it. okay. It's really interesting. And it brings me to the question of Donald Trump. Because uh, he is seen by a lot of people as himself an X event, an extreme event, because he can cause so much trouble. But I know that you were actually in favor, uh, and uh, uh, the question is why? What was it what you were in favor of, uh, such kind of person? And if we think now of the political field in Austria, could also be that maybe some uh, kind of extreme person get to build or to take part in the government. So the question is, what is the good thing in such extreme events? Well, as a general principle, extreme events uh, happen in a way that in, in the short term there's usually quite a lot of pain, uh, socially, emotionally, financially, and otherwise, you know, earthquakes, hurricanes, and whatever. But at the same time, that extreme event has the positive effect, usually, of blowing away the existing power structure and opening up new niches for ideas, products, services, and so on that would have never gotten a chance otherwise. And I'll give you an example that we all know about. Think about that asteroid that blew away the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Well, it was pretty bad news for the dinosaurs, no question about it, but it was very good news for you and me because without that X event, we wouldn't be here today. Mm. And we wouldn't be having this conversation. So the same thing can happen in getting to more modern times. I personally believe that the U.S., the power structure in the United States, which is essentially uh, the banks and the politicians, roughly, they became out of, out of control. And they needed to essentially be blown away. A good illustration of this is the huge income inequalities, for example, mm -hmm. in the USA. And, of course, the existing power structures, they never want uh, to have any major change. They're perfectly happy. Well, the last people who want major change are the power structures. Mm -hmm. They're happy with the situation, just as it is, because they're the prime beneficiaries. So something has to happen that is a force majeure, that they that wipes out this power structure, usually it's a war or a pandemic or some major thing like that, and basically enables you to shuffle the cards and deal out new hands, mm -hmm. and this creates opportunities for new services, new products, and whatever. So I've made the case in one of my books and papers that I've written 
that you shouldn't fear these X events. You should prepare for them so that you're a survivor because if you are, your life ultimately is going to be better. And X events are a necessary condition for human progress. There would be no human progress without them. So you shouldn't fear or even try and prevent them. What you really should do, I think, is devote a lot more energy and attention to trying to manage them. So that they don't, and we, I'll give you examples, we do it all the time. You burn down parts of forests so the rest of the forest has a better chance to survive. You go out into your backyard where your garden is and you pull up the weeds and throw them out so the tomatoes grow better and so on. These, these are X events for the weeds and for the trees that got burned down, but they're positive in the longer term perspective for the overall system. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a very common phenomenon. Uh, and so it, I'm, this is one of the reasons I'm interested in X events. I, I'm not afraid of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that they should be understood. Be yeah, because you are one who loves to, to evolve constantly, right? But coming back to our political uh, scenery here, yeah. and you mentioned uh, we could prepare, yeah. however, yeah. even if we cannot prevent X events. Mm -hmm. Would you have two, three tips uh, for leaders and decision makers how to prepare for an accident? Well, these are pretty general principles, but let me just tell you what, what I'm thinking in this regard. One, tip number one, never say never. I often g give speeches and talk about extreme events and ask somebody, well, what do you think about that? And they say, oh, this is so horrible. I can't even think about it. Therefore, it can't happen. Therefore, it can't happen. And it's a complete non sequitur. Uh, it doesn't mean it can't happen. These things happen all the time. But people just don't want to acknowledge the fact that they can happen. So that's what I mean by never say never. Mm -hmm. That's tip number one. Mm -hmm. Tip number two is if you're the loser of the current election, or even if you're the winner, it doesn't really matter, uh, you should start right now thinking about the next election. And you should start thinking about it in the sense of trying to get some sense, feeling, for how the population is going to be feeling as a group when the next election comes around. By that time, are they going to be welcoming the future, looking forward to it, or are they going to be fearing it? Because those two polarities, looking forward or fearing the future, have a huge impact on the kinds of social events that tend to happen. And so if you're in a position to, in some way, influence how people feel, and by this I mean how do they really feel. Mm -hmm. I don't mean go out and, and ask them or take questionnaires and, and get uh, uh, opinions. I want to look more at what people do, not what they say. Mm -hmm. What they do gives a much better view of how they feel mm -hmm. than what they say. People will say almost anything. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's tip number two. And you wrote a book about that, right? I did, called yeah. Mood Matters. Mood Matters, yeah. yeah. So that would be an interesting uh, read. No, I'm sorry that there. there's no German edition mm -hmm. to recommend. Mm -hmm. Maybe some mm -hmm. enterprising publisher will create one. <laughs> but right now, you have yeah. to get it in either English or Korean. There's a Korean <laughs> okay. edition. It was a bestseller in Korea. Uh, yeah, so tip number three, mm -hmm. and it's my last tip, is You know, if everything else fails, I think you ought to walk down the street here, go over to the cathedral, and say a few prayers to the cosmos to help you out. <laughs> so that, that's it. That's my wisdom for today. Okay. Thank you so much, John. Pleasure. I hope that our viewers will take a good lesson uh, from your thoughts. And, uh, yeah. Especially the time. last one. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank you for having me.